So it looks like we do have a quorum. Um, Kara said that she was coming also. She did? Okay. Yes. What about Mr. Doyne? Uh, we thought he was. We communicated yeah. with him earlier, but we've not heard anything else. Okay. You know, it's uh, it's six thirty. I mean, I'm sorry, two thirty six. Man, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a, a significant number of items to cover today in new business, so I'd rather get started and let people catch All up. All right. Uh, first item of business is Brooklyn uh, subdivision lots thirteen R and fourteen R, a fourteen A R B R. So it's a replant of a replant. Looks like. Van, we can't see you. Well, if 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 we had the camera on, you'd be looking at Jim. Uh, huh. Will that up, will that upset the board? Huh. <laughs> let's let, let's keep it off. <laughs> We're here. We're here though. Um, so this this is a replat. We've kind of got the screen split between us, so it makes it easier for us to function. Um, uh, this is just a realignment of the common lot line between these two properties. That's all it is. And uh, there's no issues on this uh, staff's recommended approvals file. I see the new line and the old line. Okay. Yeah, there's not much any, any questions. Thank you, Danny. Any uh, board members or anybody have any questions on this one? What what uh, is that? Is that just does the same ownership have the top and the bottom lots? No, I believe it's two separate owners, Mayor Hayes. I assume they're all in agreement, though. Then absolutely, I think somebody's built a driveway or a parking pad or something over the property line or too close to it. Would be my guess. So they're simply realigning the existing property line between the two lots. All right, any further questions? Apologize, I'm just gonna press forward until somebody says it was. Um, all right, then. Uh, so, okay, Bennett Acres lots one through three. And uh, lot hold, hold on just a second. I'm, my next item was Rawlings, but I never went back through here. And, well, the agenda, the there we go. Item there is we go. Bennett Acres. Yeah, there we go, that's fine, got it. And it's off on, on the south side of Mail Route Road. Um, it's this is a there's not any issues on this particular matter of fact, the regular staff recommend approvals filed. They've um, the, the all their existing buildings, uh, they're just realigning, well, they're segregating those two lots out on the uh, the back. Uh, there's an existing duplex on each lot and the owner of the whole property wants to sell uh, one duplex with one lot. So that's, that's how we were, they were able to configure the lots to meet the setbacks and, and get it approvable. Well, that's all there is to that one really. Okay, anybody have any questions on this one? <clears throat> Who's responsible for maintaining the access easement? All, all three property owners. Okay. Next item is WDW Estates lots one and two final plat. And uh, it's a Fox Ridge Road. <clears throat> they unfolded where you can see it. And this is just a subdivision of one large track of the two five acre tracks. One, one ten and two fives. There, yeah. There's, there's only two lots. There's only two. Yeah, that's what I said. You said one ten into two. Oh, he said one ten into two fives. I, that's what he said. And I thought he said and two fives. Okay, that's all, all it is. All we need on this one is. Uh, a septic, septic permit for lot two. So just need a septic approval for that lot, and we'll be good to go. That is, again, that's all that's left on this particular subdivision. Next item is Armstrong Estates, 
It's a three lot final plat. There are no issues on this particular subdivision either. Because Jim does such a good job of ramrodding this thing. So these people get all their business done, you know? That's why it's the way it is. Um, I don't know, it's a three lot uh, house in the middle with one new house in the middle. There's lots of, there's lots of existing buildings. There's one house on the east and and whatever that is on the on the west, there's a lot of buildings on that one. But this is all that water over to the far left. Uh, yes, if there's water. Over there. No, that's a pasture over there on the far left. There, okay. On the west end. Yeah. Right here. Do you see the curve? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that's a pasture. It, this is all a family property and they wanted to add another residence to it and to keep from having to go through the site plan process they elected to create a minor subdivision and so as to the staff comments number 39 adjust the building setbacks for all three lots can you speak to that i'm sorry if i missed something the copy of the plat that the board has had uh, setbacks that were not compliant with what we required. So the applicant has provided a revised plat with the proper setbacks for lot two and lot three. Okay, so that has been satisfied. That yes. is correct. Yes. Okay. All right, any questions on this one? Okay, thank you. Rolling addition, uh, rollings plural addition, uh, two lots, final plat. Well, this one does have water on it. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so this this is existing. Uh, they're subdivided into two lots. There's going to, I guess, a new building site here on the, the westernmost lot. Well, actually, there are residences on both properties. They're already on both properties. Is, is this one? No, oh yeah, I see. I see. Yes, yes. I see. <clears throat> I mistook the line that's going north and south between the one that's the lot line, which is... It actually started out with three separate tracks that are being replatted or platted into two tracks. And they just reduced it to two. As far as any issues are concerned, I don't think there are any. Uh, they've satisfied all the staff requirements on this one. Okay, any questions on this? <clears throat> This uh, six is entered subdivision, uh, two lot final plat. And it's, let me put the glasses on here and see what I'm doing. And you can see the two lots. West Republican Road. Yeah, way up north, Mr. Major's <clears throat> territory. Yes, sir. Uh, and it's a, simply a two lot, a two lot plat. And the applicant has done everything necessary to uh, receive a approval from the staff. Okay. Any questions? Just a comment. I like the way you're putting that sort of yellow uh, to delineate what we're talking about. It really is helpful. It makes it easier to see the configuration of the right. property for sure. All right, and next is uh, Lakeview Estates, Fox A and D. Yes, this is uh, out on the west end of Lake Momel, and it's it's a new plat. It's a final plat, a preliminary plat. And you can see there's uh, four lots and two tracks. The, this is a reapproval to get. Yeah, the, 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 the preliminary plat expired on this. No, the final plat. Oh, the final, that's right. The final plat, it was not recorded within right. the one year time. So we've gone through this process, executed it, and it simply was never final, uh, 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 recorded. And, uh, and the year's time has expired, so they have to come back. Uh, tracks, what? The, the, yeah, there's, there, I was gonna say that the, Tracks F, E and F are the uh, mitigation lands 
for the lots and the four lots are we're going to require a variance because they're length the width of variance requests of more than four to one and uh, so that's what we have here and i don't think there's any issues uh except for that we've gotten the we've gotten the notice necessary for the variances so it's just a matter of the planning board uh, agreeing to approve the variances and the plat and um, the approval from the west pulaski volunteer fire department has been received yes what else has been received we've gotten all the exhibits that are pertinent to chapter eight we received the <clears throat> notification verification and i think that's all we have uh, We've got the CAD file so we can rerun the set. Yeah. I guess what has not been received? Uh, the only thing we're still needing is, is to just to get the variance. The variance is approved and the final plat approved by the board. So the, the um, bill of assurance has been received? Yes, it has. Oh, okay. So this is a little dated than what we have. Quite a bit. Yeah, when we get it written, a lot of things happen after we write it because we're trying to get them to to do the things necessary in order to make it as easy as possible for the board. Right, so the item 24 has been um, taken care of. Yes, well, yeah. okay. we have a copy of the, the original subdivision review from the health department for this. Okay. So you just need to have an updated one? Well, if the health department requires that, that's gonna be up to them to tell the applicant. I mean, we, they, they approved it back in 2010, so uh, 2020, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's old, but it's not that old. Right. So I guess I, I may be tracking with Ms. Seams on this one. Provide update of, a, of Arkansas Highway Department subdivision review if required. Is that? Is we that don't know that the health department is going to re, want them to reapply for it. But if they do, it's not approved until they say it is. Okay, got it. And when, when will you know? Why don't we know that now? Ask the applicant. You'd have to ask, yeah, the applicant when, when the okay. meeting starts. This is, this will be Mr. White and Mr. Ferguson. Okay. So that's the. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to jump in now or do you the actual? Meeting. Um, I tell you what, let's let's do the next one, Mr. Wyatt, and let's come back to it if we have time. Yes, sir. Thank you. The uh, next item of business is a resolution for oh, the. Oh, oh, oh. So, oh, I'm sorry. But, the, but let's <clears throat> number nine, the applicant has requested it be deferred. So I'm uh, sorry I skipped over that. I don't have a number nine. Yeah. Number eight. You're... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, uh, my no, numbers, no, 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 my, my agenda is outdated too. It's <laughs> number eight. Yes. Okay, so now we got we've got one more uh number eight, Lakewood. I'm sorry, Lake, Lakeview West Estates phase three. The applicant is requesting deferral on that one. Yes. Oh, that's the one. Okay. That's correct. Item eight. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, so yes, let's go back. Uh, Mr. White, if you'd like to please uh, respond on Lakeview Estate slots A through D, tracks E and F, final plat. There was a question about um, number 24, provide update of Arkansas Highway Department subdivision review if required. Um, and uh, I think the outstanding question, well, can you respond to whether or not that has um, what's the status of that with the health department, I suppose? There was two, two items there. I think you, we do have the, the permit on how we for our access. The second item was the health department. Which you have to, just set to the health department and get that, get that reapproved. I can't hear. I can't hear Mr. Y. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, Ms. Ames. Let me let me let me jump in here. 
Um, yeah, you're cutting out, Mr. Wyatt, really pretty badly. And I think, by the way, I think I said highway department. I meant to say health department. Um, I, your internet connection may be really bad. You may need to dial in. Can you try again, Mr. Wyatt? Sure, Mr. Chairman. I, can you hear me now? Yes, so far. So the much like the preliminary plan approval, the health department approval expired. We just resubmit what we had and they reapprove it. It's very, very similar. Each 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 group has a one year like uh, Okay, and so you've submitted for that approval or it has been received? We have sent we have sent that okay. Okay, so that, that's the status of it. And so what we're being asked today is to approve based on staff, uh, I'm sorry, but yes, based on staff's ability to, um, uh, uh, let me rephrase that, that we approve it with the understanding that that will be received before final approval is given by staff. That's, that's correct, yes, sir. Okay, any other questions on this one? Mr. Chairman, could you just restate what Mr. White said? <laughs> uh, yes, um, my understanding from what he said was that they did submit and receive approval from the Arkansas Health Department, but it, that approval has expired. It was over a year ago, and so they have submitted that request again and are awaiting uh, approval. Uh, from the Arkansas Health Department. So we're being asked today to approve this in lieu of that um, uh, uh, approval being received. And it, uh, staff will not uh, approve or provide final approval until that is verified. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got seven minutes left. Let's defer. Other business, we have the public hearing on the proposed subdivision ordinance uh, amendment uh, regarding notification requirements. And uh, my apologies, Van. Uh, so just to make sure that we're all aligned, including me, <laughs> this will effectively be the final reading of this and will be available for a vote unless there are changes, which then would require the change to be made in a final reading and vote, then vote. Hold on just a second. I think I'm, I misstated that. Let me back up. Because the bylaws state that we have to finalize any changes, then there's a, a formal reading that must be occur that must occur during one of our board meetings, and then the vote will come at the subsequent meeting. Correct? It, yes. If there's any substantial changes, if there's a grammatical change or something like that, or punctuation, or I don't think there's an issue there. But if there's any substantive change in the in the uh, proposal as it's submitted to y'all today and is being heard as a public hearing, it would probably need to come back in the April meeting if a change is made. Okay, but if there are no substantial changes made today, we're eligible, has this been, this this particular verbiage has been read? Yes, and it's been advertised as a public hearing. Okay, all right. So this will be, we'll, we'll do another reading and then it will be up for a vote unless there are uh, substantial changes. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Any questions on that? Uh, I did submit some punctuation changes, um, and I'm sure they're probably in there. I just, is that something we'll talk about at the public hearing? Just to make okay. sure they're there. <laughs> it's all, all changes that we've discussed and uh, at the last meeting and subsequent to that have been incorporated in this document. Okay, I just wanted to see them if that's okay um, during the public hearing, I guess. And oh yeah, it's on the it's in your agenda should be, and it's also uh, on our PowerPoint. Okay, I didn't. I've okay, got I don't think I got a copy. I received these. Oh, I don't know that I got a copy in my packet, but now, there was a lot, so it could be <laughs> it could be stuck in between. <laughs> oh no, 
I look through it. I, I don't see my copy. I also don't. Anyway, I might have misplaced it. And then um, I also wanted to mention uh, JP Reed wanted to sponsor this as the primary sponsor once it passes through the um, the uh, the planning board. That's good because you'll need at least one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, and then the public hearing, uh, considering the final draft resolution prepared by the land use plan subcommittee. Everybody should have received that, uh, board members should have received that in their packet and it's been displayed by Van now. So, um, and then Van, so where do we stand on, on this? This is our, um, this is for the, um, we'll, we'll read this. This, this hmm. has been advertised as a public hearing item as well. So unless there's some changes to it, as we referred to the first item, uh, if the board approves it substantially as the way it is, it goes to the quorum court uh, for their, their, their agenda in April. Both Very of good. these items would go into their April agenda if we get it taken care of today. What is the date of that April meeting? Sorry to put you on the spot. Do you happen to it should be the same as as uh, our planning board, I'm guessing. Uh, hold on here. I'll tell you. I think it's the 26th. It's the uh, it's April the 26th. It's, it's the our planning boards are aligned with the quorum court, at least right now they do. And uh, except for a couple of months that we make minor changes to it. Uh, but yeah, it'll be the 26th of April. Okay. And I'm trying to remember what time they meet. Six, I think. Is it so? Six o'clock, I think. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I had I, I talked to Mr. McClendon about maybe removing one of those public hearing blanks in the whereas uh, on the, that second part. And um, I know that Mr. McClendon had asked the county attorney if removing that would require yet another, if that's a substantive change. So I don't know if it is or not, but, and I don't know if the board would like to do that, but as it is now, we, we I think Mr. McClendon, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way it's written now, we'll have to have two public hearings before we forward it on to the quorum court, unless we change that. Is that correct? I don't think you have to have two. It's just that there was a place for two. And if the, if the board decides that it's not necessary to have the second one, then we can remove that and it should be able to go forward, I would think. Okay, so it will remove one of the blanks today if we if I make a motion to that effect. Yes, because it's it was there with the idea that we may have two, but there's not a requirement for there to be two. So okay. we okay. another whereas the Plastic County Plain Board held duly publicized public hearings on blank and blank. So if, it, if it's approved today, we would uh, eliminate the plural to hearings and one of the blanks and put the date in and that would be it. Okay, Today's right. date. We'll, we'll discuss that and see what the, what the board okay. uh, chooses to do. All right, it's three o'clock, let's get started. Uh, thank you, Van, thank you, Jim, for all your hard work going into the, today's meeting. And officially, I'd like to uh, express my appreciation to Mayor Hayes for the last two meetings. I very much appreciate uh, Vice Chairman Mayor Vice Chairman Mayor Hayes. <laughs> well, you can buy me lunch sometime, uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> sold it, sold it, sold it. <laughs> very much appreciate you sincerely, uh, and I appreciate the the boards and um, uh, allowing me to uh, to take those times. Uh, that, uh, that I did last two meetings. Um, I, I, I will say now that there is very likely going to be a business obligation that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, required to attend. I, it's 90% sure I will have to be gone in the next meeting. And I very much uh, I'm trying to avoid that if at all possible. But I will update um, and let you know if I'm going to actually be a critical. Um, right now, it looks like I would be. So we'll, we'll, we'll address that. 
And my apologies in advance if that's the case. All right, uh, roll call. Do we have an update roll call? Uh, With eight board members in attendance. <clears throat> that's excellent. All right, great. Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. On the minutes, um, it kind of appeared that we yeah, have a me, Yeah, let me get there. Right. Yeah, let me, uh, because I had the same thing. But real quick, you, you said there was eight board members. Uh, was that, who are we missing? Well, one absent, one open position. Sam Coffin has resigned. Right. So we're so we eight have, voting members. Okay, I see Cara now and Mr. Wilson and Mr. Doyne was able to join. Yes, Dexter's okay. here and so is Ms. Boyd Connors. Very good. Okay. All right. We're good then. Okay. And I apologize, uh, Mark, uh, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> uh, I had the same, I think I had the same thing that you did. Um, I, on the minutes, I, I'm going to have to request that we, that we delay uh, the approval of minutes from the last meeting because it's, it's unclear. Um, I, I'll show my and other board members. You can let me know if you decide, if you receive the same. The minutes at the bottom appear to be overriding. Uh, doc, I mean, uh, print that was on this page before, as of where it starts. Then there appears to be content that's missing. Is that what you were going to note, Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. That's correct. We're, we're getting a copy of the minutes to look at them again to see what may be going on there. Okay. I would just say we defer approval of the February, let's see, yeah, February 22nd meeting minutes. To okay, and I'll take that as a motion if I hear a second. Okay. I second. Uh, uh, Patricia second. Blick. All right, thank you, Ms. Blick. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, and there's no old build, old build, old business. So we'll move right into easy to get to say. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just say, I don't know if all these, if if everybody's just getting things ramped up because it's spring or what, but I don't know that I've ever. <clears throat> Seen so many uh, 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 requests come in at the same meeting where everything is everybody has their their dots, I mean their eyes dotted and their teeth crossed. So, um, but yeah, but let's go ahead and look. So, Brooklyn Manor subdivision lots thirteen AR and fourteen BR final plat. Yes, this is a two lot replat with the. Uh, of the, the common line between the two being slightly a, a lot realigned. And the staff has gotten everything, we've received everything we need to recommend approvals file. Okay, I'll enter, entertain a motion on uh, the Brooklyn Manor subdivision lots 13 AR and 13 BR final plat. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the Brooklyn Manor subdivision lot 13 AR and 13 BR final plat. Okay, I'll, I'll second it. All right, Mr. Hayes and Mrs. Zines. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Number two, Bennett Acres, lots one to three, final plat. Yes, uh, Bennett Acres, lots one and two, final plat. One, two, three. Sorry, it's the uh, south of Mail Mount, of Mail Mount, Mail Route Road, and it's the they're creating a, a, a three lots in order to uh, segregate the two duplexes on the back. So they're making a lot for each of those and maintaining the third lot. So it'll be a three lot replat, and the staff recommends approval as filed. 
Okay, I'll entertain a motion on Bennett Acres lots one through three, uh, final plat. So to approve the uh, Burnett, Bennett, sorry, Bennett Acres lots one to three, final plat as presented. Okay, Christy. All right. I have a motion and a second on the floor. Any, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. WDW Estates, lots one and two, final plat. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I want to ask one question before we proceed. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the chair voting on any of these items or uh, withholding their vote? And let's I, have a tie. I have not. Okay. So, so the, each of these items thus far have been approved 7 0. My understanding, to be clear, though, is that I may vote. It's correct. You, you could if you wanted to. Right. I, I took that opportunity, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> he did <laughs> indeed. <laughs> uh, WDW uh, number, item number three, uh, two lot final plat as you can see there and it's uh the applicant has met all the staff requirements and the staff recommends approval is final no set we need a well, i'm sorry we need, we need a perk test for lots two. two the recommendation is approval subject to the health department approval of the perk test on lot two Very good. mr chairman is item 27 also net needed to provide a cad file we have the CAD file. Oh, okay, thank you. We have everything except the PERC test on lot two. <clears throat> okay, I'll entertain a motion on WDW Estates, lots one and two, final plat. Uh, oh I'm happy to move that we accept the application for WDW Estates, lots one and two, final plat. This is Patricia Blake. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. I did vote that time then. I guess I changed my mind. Why not? Okay, we have an 8 0 vote on that one. Oh, oh wait, I, I didn't get to vote. Um, I vote no. Oh, okay. we don't have an 8 0 vote. We have a 7 1. <laughs> okay, motion carries. Uh, next item is the Armstrong Estates, lots one through three, final plat. Yes. Um, you can see there, well, it's hard to see, but there, the new lot is the uh, being created as lot two. Well, actually all of them are, but lot two is vacant. So they're creating a building site for lot two. Um, the staff has received everything we need to recommend approval as final. Mr. Chairman, so items one twenty seven, I know thirty nine. Well, could you could you explain if all the, the staff comments there are three outstanding items? Yes, but but uh, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that that we we don't get off track going forward. I, that was uh, the case on the last one. Uh, first, before we go into any discussions, we need to have a motion to see if we even get a second before we have discussion. I have a point of order. Sorry. At point, at point of order. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want you to hate me, but um, according to Robert's rules of order, with a board as small as ours is, um, we don't really have to even have a motion to have a discussion. Well, I, we've discussed this before, and that's the way I'd like to proceed. Well, another point of order, and <laughs> please, um, according to the hierarchy of law. There, there, there's the, the rule, there's a hierarchy of rules. And so the law and what's written in procedure comes first before custom. The custom can never out override what's written. Okay, uh, but I, we're gonna have to, <laughs> I think I have the authority to move forward, so we'll have to. Well, I, I appeal the decision of the chair. Okay. I'm sorry, don't hate me, Eric, but that, I'm not, uh, I really do feel strongly about I'm, this. <laughs> I'm not at all. But, but my, okay. my point is, is that we need to get to the bottom of that. And then, but right. we'll, well, I do appeal the decision of the chair, and that requires a second and a vote. 
So if nobody seconds that, then you can continue, but I still have the issue. So I do appeal the decision of the chair. Oh. Okay, you appeal the decision of the chair in the manner in which we were going about it. Um, There's no so second, Mr. Your, so your amendment, I mean, your, your appeal is that I'm asking for a motion before the discussion on the item. Yes. And that's based on your interpretation. Yes of it, it is the qualification Robert. Of, of a small organization? No, Robert's Rules of Order, which our bylaws abide to. I we abide by Robert's Rules of Order. It's our parliamentary procedure. No, I understand that very well. But it states in there that small, what's the word it uses? Um, the small, small boards like ours may use the informal procedure. It, it doesn't say small boards like the Pulaski County Planning Commission. Well, no, I, I'm sorry, but any small board, tw 12 members or less. It says, um, it says boards, 12 members or less may use the informal procedure. And our board has nine or eight now. It, yes, but I think there's also some latitude in there that allows for scope. And that's that's been my interpretation, and that's that's kind of what we've done in the past. So, um, I, so you're you're appealing. So I, I'm not feeling comfortable about that, but I'll allow your appeal if it if it has a second. Even though I'm not really clear on where we'll go from there, because I'm not I'm not interested in changing that. Okay. It's, yeah, I appeal your your interpretation of that rule. Okay, so do we have, um, we don't have staff attorney on, um, do we, Van? No. Okay. We don't have a second either, Mr. Chair. Yeah, my, where we are right now or where I am is if we do receive a second, what comes next? Then there's Adjournment. a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> There, there's a discussion, and then, um, and then everyone will vote on it. And but that, I'm, and this, yeah, what I'm not comfortable with is yielding my opinion on that because of a discussion without having staff attorney weighing in before the discussion as a part of the discussion. Uh, I don't feel that that's appropriate. Well, the board can overrule the, the board chair according to Robert's rules of order. Uh, I understand. Um, okay, all right. So we have, uh, I think I, in this case, I would like to yield to reason. I don't want to seem like I'm pushing through things through though I'm, I will go on record not being comfortable with this. <laughs> okay. um, and, I, and if staff attorney approves, um, if it goes through, then I, I will connect with staff attorney and I reserve the right to revisit this. Does that agree? Yes. Okay. Of course, All right. yes. I, All right. I just, so uh, you have an appeal. Uh, Ms. Ains, if you'll, if you'll restate your appeal, please. Uh, okay, I appeal the decision of the board chair on um, the interpretation of uh, making a motion before we can have a discussion. Okay. All right. Do I hear a second? Okay. All right. The motion is denied. And then let's move forward. So uh, I'm entertaining a motion of the Armstrong Estates, lots one through three, final plat. Move to approve or move to approve the Armstrong Estates, lots one to three, final plat. Second. All right, I'm second with Mr. Hayes. Yes. Now, we need discussion. Is the items 1, 27, and 39, are those all taken care of? Yes, they have been addressed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and Van, just to be clear, I will I will let you know if I do not vote going forward. Okay, so you're voting until you say you're not. That's right. Okay. 
All right, next item is the Rawlings edition. Lots one through, I'm sorry, one and two final plat. That is correct. Uh, the applicant has provided the staff everything necessary to recommend approval. They've addressed items two, 27 and 50, as well as showing the building line and uh, staff recommend approval is fine. Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yes. The, what are the, what's the difference between the red lines and the white lines? Mr. Wilson, the red lines are the existing parcel boundaries as determined by the assessor. The white lines are the proposed boundaries as reflected by the plat. So, okay, so there's existing three parcels. That is correct. They're taking three existing parcels of record and flatting them into two lots of record. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, I know what you're going to say. That was anything. <laughs> That's right. He had he was able to make a discussion item without. That's right, and, and okay. we'll make every effort not to do that going forward. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, but I would I'll be fine that. with it. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. Um, the Rawlings edition lots one through one and two final plat. I'll make that motion. All right, Mr. Hayes. Do I hear a second? Second it. I'll second it. Patricia Blick. Ms. Blick. Okay, now discussion. And one note, I'm just realizing, I was a little confused earlier, but it appears from the, like the, the center, north and south, that line going from there down, it's also a, an orange line as well, right? Can you, are you talking about this line right here, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, that, that, will, be, that will be part of the proposed lot line. Okay. And it is an existing lot boundary up to this point right here. And then it takes and goes north, east, northeast. So okay. th th this lot line here and that lot line will cease to exist. Will cease to exist. Okay. All right, very good. Any other questions? Any other discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, Hennard subdivision lots one and two, final plat. Is this, this uh, is a two lot final plat. The applicant has submitted uh, the requirements to meet items 24, 27, 33, and they have shown the rear and uh, uh, side yard setbacks. Staff recommends approval is fine. Could you restate 20, what you said about the, can you restate that, Van? Yes. 27. The, the, on your write-up, there, there were some items to be addressed by the applicant. I um, stated that they have met 24, 27, 33. And they've also shown the rear and the side yard setbacks. So the staff recommends approval is filed. They've met all the requirements. And this is on the Hennard subdivision? Correct. I do not, I do not see that. I see staff recommendations approved. So I guess I guess I have an up, a version that's a little bit you, more. You have an updated write-up for that. Okay. All right. All right. So We're just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, I apparently. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, move to approve Henry subdivision tracks one and two final plat. Second, this is Christy. All right. Any discussion? Um, Mrs. Blick is saying I lost my internet connection. I have to join. She's going to rejoin on her phone. Let me let's give her a second. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just admitted her to the room. If she is available, would she? Yeah, you. I'm. I'm back on. It's just my screen froze up, and I my computer's kind of frozen up, so I'm on my phone. But I'm I'm back on. Sorry about that. That's okay. We're just keeping you on your toes. There we go. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So we've had we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the Pinard subdivision lots one and two final plat. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Seventh item is the Lakeview West Estates, lots A through D, tract E and F, final plat. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this subdivision is uh, has been preliminarily platted and final platted, and the final plat has expired. So uh, they're having to refile it in order to get a current final plat that they can execute and record at the courthouse. The stat, the applicant has met items 1, 24, 27, and 38. Uh, well, no, not 38. 1, 24, and 27. The applicant has met all the requirements that the staff has have recommended. And with the exception of the four lot variances, which are uh, the, the small lots, so whatever, hold on, I can't see what the numbers are. A through D, A through D. Uh, with A through D, they need a variance for the length, the width, of which are greater than four to one. The, app, the, 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 the planning board has approved all of this in its current form uh, a year ago, I guess, a little over a year ago. Yeah. So the uh, staff recommends approval subject to the board approving the variances. And just to be clear, Van, I was reading through there, making sure you're on your toes. Right. Okay. <laughs> in, in the board's version, it says provide West Pulaski Volunteer Fire Department approval. They've done that. Okay. Okay. So first off, we have a variance request uh, being requested by uh, the applicant um, for lots A through D, which exceed the four to one depth to width ratio as allowed by section 4C2C of the Subdivision and Development Code. I'll entertain a motion on the variance request. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the variance, the length, the width variance request for lots A, A, lots A B, C, and D. Here a second. I'll second it. Okay, that's Mr. Wilson and Mr. Hayes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, motion carries, I believe, seven to one. All right. Now uh, I'll entertain a motion on the Lakeview uh, estate slots A through D, tracks E and F, final plat as submitted. I'll make it. Motion. To approve. Approve. All right. I have a motion to approve. Are you a second? I'll second. It's uh, Patricia Blick. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes. Um, Mr. McClendon had mentioned that item 24 has been re um, received, but it has not. It only has been sent to the ADA, uh, to the Department of Health. So, as I understand, that requirement has not been met. Um, just to clarify, and I can let uh, Van. Uh, my well, understanding was that Van did not state that, that that we we referred back to Mr. White and Mr. Ferguson, and Mr. White in the addendum meeting noted that though the uh, Arkansas Health Department approval was provided back uh, a year ago, it has expired, and that that request has been submitted but not received. So, um, Van, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you stated that 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 would not be correct, right? Um, as, I, as we understand it, the, the health department approval that they gave has expired after one year. And uh, so our recommendation would be approval subject to the renewal of that permit. Did that answer your question, Ms. Sings? It did. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 
Okay, motion carries seven to one. Okay, moving on to other business. <clears throat> no, no. Mr. Chairman, we have one more item. Oh, yeah, yes, thank you very much. Thank oh. you. I put that aside so I wouldn't forget it and I put okay. it too far. We Next do item. like to. Oh, wow. Sorry, this one. Oh, wow. yes, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. The last item of business under new business is the Lakeview West Estates Phase 3, lots 15 through 18 and track G final plat. Um, and as stated by staff in the agenda meeting, uh, the applicant has asked that this uh, item be deferred to a future meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to that. I make motion to defer. defer the Lakeview West Estates phase three, blocks 15 through 18, track G final plat to defer it. Okay. There's I'll second that. All right, in a second. Any discussion? Okay. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Van. You're welcome. Okay, now other business. We have the public oh. hearing on the proposed subdivision ordinance amending amendment regarding notification requirements. Yes, we have those. We should have them up there on the there you go. <laughs> yes, this is this is a revision of section 1.10. And this is as we understood it from our last board meeting. This is all the things that you see here today are what's been reviewed by the board in previous meetings. <coughs> Um, so in the agenda meeting, uh, Ms. Ains, you mentioned you requested certain grammatical or punctuation changes. I did. If you wouldn't mind pointing those out, if I read through it, I'm not going to be able to, it'll be difficult <laughs> to read that. Yeah. So if you don't mind, would you, would you point those out? Yes, um, I suggested to remove the period at the end of a list of items on number 5B. So all those. Um, so that's, so that's, it's been removed. And then on number 8, B, C, and D needed periods removed <clears throat> and those have been removed thank okay. you all right very good any any other items uh, did you have a question oh no no that no uh i think that was it Just okay those. thank you absolutely okay uh and in the last meeting was this read in its entirety, Van? Yes, I would say so. We went over each line item at the board okay. meeting. Oh, Mr. Chairman, there is one item on number 8A. Um, mm -hmm. According to the meeting minutes um, and the way it was written on our draft, it was different. And I just wanted to make sure I can't Read, um, let's see, number 8A. I don't. It's 8A states copies of any certified mail receipt stamped by the post office. Okay, yes. Um, that is the change that I had requested after reviewing the document. So <clears throat> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I believe that it's required that this be read, Dan. Do you agree? I'm perfectly willing to do so. The resolution? Yes. Yes. The change. I think that's probably appropriate. 
How did you, okay, so I'm going to read all, all of the changes, starting with section 1.10, notice requirements. <clears throat> the application subdivider shall be required to provide notice for all major subdivision applications and all applications that seek a variance from the standards of this ordinance and all applications that seek a variance from the flood hazard ordinance. The requirements shall be as follows. One, the applicant subdivider shall submit proof that at least 15 days notice of the Pulaski County Planning Board's public hearing has been given to all property owners within a 1300 foot radius of the property, which is the subject of a major subdivision application or a variance request. I might note just more for avo avoidance of doubt here, and I think this is a minor, and I think everybody will agree. I would, I'd like to see a comma between the one and the three and 1300. I've seen contracts before where it was actually, in this case, meant to be 130, and a comma would have clarified that. Is that okay? I make a motion that we add a comma between the one and the three wherever it's noted in this, in the changes. Second. Okay, second from Mr. Hayes. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. any opposed? Thank you, moving on. Number two, the notice shall inform the property owners within the distance listed in one above of the property subject to the major subdivision application or variance requests, said notice shall describe the requested variances and state the sections of the ordinance receiving said requested variances. Number three, the applicant subdivider shall utilize one or a combination of the following methods to for providing notice to the affected property owners. A, a walk around notice supplied by the Department of Planning and Development with a list of property owners within the radius outlined in one above, provided by the, prop the planning department, taken from the latest parcel records or a list from an abstract company provided by the applicant, showing property ownership taken from current tax records. B, a certified mail notice return receipt requested to owners utilizing a provided form letter and a list of property owners within the radius outlined in one above provided by the planning department taken from the latest parcel records or a list from an abstract company provided by the applicant showing property ownership taken from current tax records. Four, all properties involved in major subdivision applications or variance request applications shall be, shall be posted with a physical 48 inch by 48 inch sign at the front of the property visible from the street at least 15 days prior to the Pulaski County Planning Board planning public hearing. The signs shall be provided by the staff to the applicants at the cost specified by the staff. If the signs are destroyed or torn down, the applicant must obtain replacements from the staff. The signs are to, be re are to remain posted through the date of the planning board public hearing. Staff shall visually verify that the signs have been posted per the requirements listed above. <clears throat> Five, the sign must contain the following yeah. information. A, title, major subdivision or variance requested. B, contact information, Pulaski County Planning and Development, phone number, county website. C, image of the plat. D, date of public hearing. Number six, 
The staff shall provide a form letter to the applicant for the applicant to complete and return to staff. Staff will post the form letter on the department's website at least 15 days prior to the public hearing. Seven. Let Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been looking at number five, uh, and, uh, and, and I know we just passed that one, but I'm just wondering if instead of just simply major subdivision, the variance requested is self-explanatory. Major subdivision may be a little bit confusing as to whether it's there or whether it's going to be there or whether it's, I just think maybe added, add the word requested to that major subdivision might be more clear or clarify what's going on. I, I don't know. I, that, that, that to me could be a reaction uh, from the remaining members of the planning commission. Uh, would you like to make that statement in the form of a motion? Yeah, let me go ahead and, and, and uh, add the word after subdivision in the title of uh, that major title that uh, we've discussed to add major subdivision requested. Do I hear a second? Oh, my goodness. Next item, Mr. Chairman. No problem. <laughs> I think it's a fine idea, Mr. Mayor. I I, I don't think there's a difficulty in that. Yeah, I, I, that was that was what I was seeking input from the rest of the commission. And lo and behold, it came fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> fast, silent, and furious. Huh? Silent and furious. Yeah, right. Okay, I took my I took my time. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. <laughs> oh, and it's and just let me say it's all good, y'all. We're all good. <laughs> all good. All right. Number seven. Staff will provide an email notice if requested to any property owners associations <clears throat> or individuals representing neighborhoods in the area of the major subdivision or variance request application. Number eight. Proof of notice is to be filed with the staff of the public, I'm sorry, of the Department of Planning and Development at least six days prior to the public hearing and shall include A, copies of any certified mail receipts stamped by the post office, B, certified listing of recorded property owners provided by an abstract company or the list of property owners provided by the planning department. C, a list of owners notified by a walk around process and D, a copy of the completed public meeting notice and signed affidavit. Van, will you confirm that I've read through all of the requested additions and changes? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I will say that uh, one, comment is I think you read it as the staff must contain on number five it's the staff shall contain the, the sign shall the sign I'm sorry the sign shall contain the sign shall contain okay. great all right thank you but otherwise I think we we've, we've covered it okay and there I'll... was just one minor thing at the very very beginning since Mr. McClendon mentioned that <laughs> um you, I think you read the application subdivider and and it and you meant to read the applicant. Subscriber. Applicant, thank you. Sure. And Mr. Chairman, I just had one other little recommendation. I put it in the chat. I wonder if at the very beginning under section 110 notice requirements, if that should actually be a colon after follows instead of a period, because we say the requirements shall be as follows. I think that that should be a colon instead of a period. The attorneys are going to read this before it goes to the quorum court. They're going to make any syntax changes. Or okay. Comments. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, then this, that provides the final reading of the public hearing for these proposed changes. Um, trying to think if this is the appropriate time, but I will go ahead um, and say that I'm, I'm proud of everybody, all the stakeholders in, in, this, in this effort to make our public more aware. And that includes in this case, the applicant 
um, upon which this was originally brought up and uh, the feedback that we've received from that applicant as well as others in the community. So just wanna commend everybody. I feel like this is um, uh, just speaking for myself, but I feel like we're doing uh, the public um, good in considering these changes. Um, so that said, I'll open it up for any discussion before we have final a vote. I would like to second what you said, um, Chairman McDaniel. It's been um, a, a wonderful learning experience for me and I have been so impressed by the community and their involvement with this process. And I appreciate the board also in um, listening to the concerns of the community. And, um, and this is a wonderful upgrade. I don't know when this was last upgraded, but I think it's, it's really gonna be popular in the community and um, make things very uh, clear to people about what's happening in their own neighborhood. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? What's a proper motion at this time or do we have one? I think we just make a motion that the, that the additions and changes as uh, just read in the final uh, reading be, be approved. I make that motion, Mr. Chairman, to, um, to approve these changes and this amendment to the uh, subdivision ordinance code notification process and send it forward to the quorum court. I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hayes and Ms. Zines. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, motion carries eight to zero. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, second order of other business, public hearing considering the final draft resolution prepared by the Land Use Plan Subcommittee. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just going to jump right in and and read this. My understanding is without any material changes, we can also, um, uh, I'll, I'll also entertain a motion and a second to approve this. And if it's, if it is approved, we'll send it on to the quorum court as well. Resolution, sorry, resolution to adopt countywide land use plan, final draft, February 4, 2022 respectfully submitted for full board review by the Land Use Plan Special Committee members, uh, Cara Boyd Connors, Mayor Patrick Hayes, Eric McDaniel ex officio, Christy Eames Chair. A resolution by the Pulaski County <laughs> recommending the Quorum Court of Pulaski County adopt a countywide land use plan. Whereas Arkansas code annotated 1417-206 allows counties to adopt plans for the general purpose of guiding and accomplishing a coordinated, efficient, and economic development of the county or part thereof. And whereas Arkansas code annotated 14-7-205 allows a Pulaski County Planning Board to prepare and recommend an official plan for the development of the county. And whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board has heard in the course of several public hearings, the concerns of property owners and the community and therefore have undertaken consideration of the need of a countywide land use plan to protect the agricultural, rural and natural areas through the formation of a special committee at their October 26, 2021 meeting by unanimous consent with purpose to submit final recommendations to the full board on how best to protect these areas no later than a date to be determined by the planning board chairman. Whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board has undertaken consideration of the need of a countywide land use plan to 
ensure and accommodate orderly development and redevelopment that respects existing communities, including their infrastructure or lack thereof, ensure the protection of areas of environmental concern, including among other things, aquifers, aquifer recharge areas, soils poorly suited to development, floodplains, wetlands, prime agricultural and forest lands, the natural habitat of rare or endangered species, areas with unique ecosystems, or areas recommended for protection in the Arkansas Natural Areas Plan. Lessen congestion in the roads and streets. Promote security from fire, panic, and other dangers. Promote health, safety, and the general welfare. Reduce light, air, and water pollution especially in the areas of wetland, I'm sorry, watersheds, wetlands, tributaries, and other natural areas. To undo concentration of population and facilitate the adequate provision of water, sewer, schools, parks, and other public requirements. Whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board held duly publicized public hearings on, and what will be that date? Um, today's date. Oh, that's right, because we're just doing one. That's right. So it'll be 3-22-2023. So restating that. Whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board held duly publicized public hearing on March 22nd, 2022, to receive public comment on the proposed countywide land use plan. Therefore, be it resolved by the Pulaski County Planning Board that section one, the initiation of a countywide land use plan process encompassing unincorporated areas to include the protection of agricultural, rural, and natural areas is hereby recommended by the Pulaski Planning, I should say Pulaski County Planning Board, and forwarded to the Pulaski County Quorum Court for their consideration. Then it'll be attested and, and signed by the board chair. Okay, I'll entertain a motion on the resolution to adopt countywide land use plan final draft. I make that motion to adopt the resolution to adopt the countywide land use plan. Can we hear a second? Onto the quorum court. Very good. Can we hear a second? I'm happy to second, happy to second it. This is Patricia Blick. Very good. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, uh, um, on the uh, top paragraph of, of uh, page two, it'll read, whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board held a duly publicized public hearing on March 22nd, 2022, to receive public comment on the proposed countywide land use plan. Thank you, Van. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Mr. Chairman, yeah, as you had mentioned, it should say Pulaski County Planning Board, but we've already passed it. We're about to vote. Um, I mean, is that something you want to amend? And or just leave it as is? We haven't passed it. You haven't passed it yet. No. No, I know that. But I just said, is that something that you'd like to? I mean, we've I've made the motion. Would you like to amend that? Motion. Yes, I think so, actually. Yes. Would okay. you like to amend your motion to include that? Yes. So okay. I'll amend my motion to include the Pulaski County Planning Board in Section 1. Very good. Mrs. Blick, are you okay with that? Yes. Amendment? Yes, okay. I'm okay with the amendment. Okay. Thank you. We do have an amended motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? Um, if I might, 
Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, ask of the uh, staff. So what happens next? Will the or what's likely to happen next? Will the quorum court get a consultant to determine the vibe or how to put together a land use plan and whether they want to um, uh, per pursue that? Or <clears throat> this is just our recommendation to them, correct? That that is correct. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that what what this will be this this uh, resolution will go to the plan, uh, quorum court. It sh ideally, it will be the April meeting, as we discussed, and the staff will be at the public hearing, I mean, at the uh, quorum court public hearing to explain whatever it is they, questions they may have. There have to be a sponsor for it or sponsors uh, from the quorum court members for this resolution. And once they do, um, I'll explain to them that in order to do this, that we'll likely need a, uh, uh, we will need a uh, consulting company to assist us with this land use study, and then hopefully the land use plan, which which will be brought back to the, it'll be brought back to the uh, uh, planning board once it ever gets to that point. There'll be public hearings, of course, as we what we do as we go through the process. And, and the, the quorum court will have to appropriate monies for us to do this study and plan. And uh, to my understanding that the money is available. So uh, we'll just have to see what the quorum court decides. And for further clarification, if I might, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is similar to like a, a college campus has a master plan for what they, you know, where buildings are gonna go and what the areas of the campus are going to be used for that sort of thing, staff? You know? Yes, uh, it's like, well, we have a master road plan already, and we have uh, regulations for the county for subdivision. We have zoning in the watershed, and we'll likely have zoning around the air base when our compatible use study is finished. Uh, so this will this study will have to take into account those things that have happened and what we have with the master road plan with the idea of integrating all those things into a cohesive plan for the county and uh, uh, based on the study that they'll do of the existing land use that's already in place in the county and then with the idea looking forward of what we may want it to look like in the future and once we have that and we go through the process with the you know the public hearings they they do the study they write the plan with the assistance of the staff and then the public's input in terms and then ultimately the planning board as well once that's achieved just like we are today we'll have a resolution uh of some sort recommending it to the planning uh to the quorum court and then it'll go to the quorum court based on what the consultants have provided, the public hearing as have established, and the uh, documents that will be forthcoming from that and to the quorum court. And then they'll have to decide if they want to adopt that or not. And if once they do, then that'll be that, except uh, what we may do after that. That is unknown. First things first is to do the study and the plan. Okay, thank you very much. Well, Mr. Chairman, yes, Ms. Um, since the uh, Arkansas statute um, mandates that the planning board is involved with this process, not just staff, and because the planning board has approved the subcommittee or the special committee, the land use plan committee, um, I would like to be part as well as the committee of the, um, the study. Uh, as you all had asked us to do and report back to you the information on how to protect the agricultural rural areas as part of this study. I would like to be involved heavily with the um, staff and the consultant um, in the process, since that's part of our duty as a planning board. So um, I don't know how that will work. and. Um, so I'm, I'm anticipating, I'm also going to be at that quorum court meeting um, with staff <clears throat> because I'd like to be part of this process very much. 
I'm trying so to I think. I guess what I, I'm asking um, is, or I'm not asking, I'm just saying that I'm going to be at the quorum court hearing and um, I would like to participate in all of the discussions. And I'd like uh, to carry out my duty um, to report back to the board what the board had for, had agreed to form the special committee to study the protection. So I would like to fulfill that duty. Okay, so I'm trying to think back as to the scope that the board approved. Did it, did, um, it's been a few months. Yeah. Uh, ben, can you confirm for us what the scope? Uh, no, I'm putting it it was my understanding that this subcommittee was to review and look at the idea of a need for a land use study and a plan and bring that back to the board, which they did. And the resolution was a culmination of that process. The going forward, uh, I mean, all the board can show up at the quorum court if they so choose. And uh, the uh, when it, when it comes to you, know, once the once the consultants are, are have been have have been chosen, they'll start a study to establish what's actually on the ground, what's out in the county as it exists. Then they'll start trying to draft a plan based on what's there and what what the public and what the county would hope it to be. And through that and that process will be public hearings, probably numerous public hearings and. They probably will be. They'll be in the neighborhoods, possibly, and then at the at the at the planning board. So the planning board, really, I think, as a whole, will will be and need to be part of the process because ultimately you're going to have to be reviewing what the consultants have determined and making a determination or a recommendation based on that. So you'll need to be involved in it, just like just like the planning board was involved in the watershed process when we did the regulations out there. And there's lots of public hearings involved, you know, where they were in, in that case, it was a certain part of the county. In this case, it'll be, I wouldn't be surprised if the consultants won't, don't and won't hold public hearings, neighborhood meetings in various parts of the county as we go through the process and then assimilate all that information and data. I would expect them to do it actually, and then come up with uh, recommendations and bring that to the planning board for review. And then ultimately, once the planning board has considered all that they've heard from, from the neighborhoods and people contacting them and people at the public hearings, when you have these, uh, you'll have a resolution. And I would expect there'll be a lot more interest in that one uh, when we get, to, as we get that process going. And Mr. Chairman, I do have um, something to say about that. Um, I, I do believe that the motion that I had made back in October was to do a study and then submit the final recommendations about, from that study to the board on how best to protect the rural agricultural and natural areas. So that study has not been done and has not been completed for the, the committee to be able to submit that to the board. So I, I submit that that process is not completed and it would be part of the um, the study that we're embarking upon that I anticipate that I'll be anyone from the planning board may participate in any of the meetings with the, the county and with the um, <clears throat> with the consultant. I'd like to be in those meetings. I'd like to meet with the consultant and I think Mr. McClendon even mentioned that we could help vet the consultant that is chosen because it's really up to the planning board to, to make these decisions and staff recommends and guides the board in these processes, if I'm reading the, you know, the code correctly. So um, I would very much like to be involved with the whole process as so, a planning board member. So Van, I, um, so this brings up, I'm, I'm a little unclear now. Um, my understanding would be that we made this uh, resolution, we adopt this resolution and it goes to the quorum court to not only fund <clears throat> and moving forward, but, but also the purview of recommendations would be under the quorum court. 
Is that your understanding or will the purview of the, of the study and the requested changes be uh, under the planning board? The, the, the quorum court will likely, if they, if they agree to the resolution that the planning board has provided on this subject, then they will, they will they'll authorize the judge or the staff to proceed with trying to hire consultants. And the quorum court can decide if they want to, they might want to create, uh, because as I've done it before, they, there was, they, they might want to create a committee to choose the consultants, for example, because somebody's gonna to have to do it. The planning director obviously will probably be part of it, but there could be any number of people. I mean, the, uh, uh, the judge, I was trying to think in the watershed. The judge was involved in the, the selection of the of the uh, consultants and CAW CEO. Of course, they were paying for it, but so it could be they they might they might decide to put to create a committee and put a quorum court member on it, and maybe the judge and the staff, and maybe somebody from the planning board, some uh, whatever. It's up it's up to them. They're going to be spending the money, so they have to decide if they want to spend the money and how they want to do it. That would be my understanding. If I was on the quorum court and um, allocated and um, voted on an approved allocation of funds, I would want the oversight of that. So uh, reconcile that against what you're, what you're saying, Mrs. Eames, is that? Oh, yeah, we're, we're the planning board. And so we are responsible for, for presenting a land use plan to the quorum court, um, well, actually, we can pat, we can do our own land use plan, and then um, we can have we don't have to have the quorum court's approval for a land use plan, uh, ultimately. But it is nice to have their approval because we can receive resources. So, um, as I understood the county attorney, um, and so once we have the land use plan, that that is our deal. We're the planning board, and we can do the land use plan all ourselves if we want to. Um, but we're going to have a consultant. That's great. Um, and then at the end of things, when we have this plan, as I understand it, um, we'll go back to the quorum court if we want to pass ordinances to put teeth in it um, or whatnot. So um, I would like to be involved with this land use plan process, the entire process, all the meetings as a planning board member, as a commissioner. Okay, so that sounds to conflict with what you were saying, Van, do you agree? Uh, any board member can be uh, uh, involved in any of it. Uh, it's got, ultimately, it's gonna be the quorum court that decides how they wanna do it, whether they wanna spend the money, and if they do, how they wanna choose a consultant. That's gonna be their call. It's not gonna be the planning board's call, it's gonna be their call. And once they do that, then I'm sure the planning board will be involved in it. I'm certain of it. And it, ultimately, whatever is uh, drawn up or agreed upon will have to be seen, heard, and discussed and agreed upon by the planning board because it's not going back to the quorum court unless the planning board is in agreement with what it, what it does. It has to have some kind of resolution before it goes to the, plan, to the quorum court because that's what they're counting on the planning board to do. Okay. All right. So that's what I, so if the quorum court approves to allocate the funds and uh, decide how the consultants will be chose, selected and so forth, then it will be upon the planning board to uh, approve the final version of that land use plan, plan uh, before it's sent back to the quorum court for approval and adoption. Is that correct? That is exactly correct. And you'll be responsible for receiving the information and ultimately molding it or adjusting it according to what you see and hear from the public and your own expertise and experience at the planning board. Okay. Because that's what your charge is to advise the quorum court. Okay, so now let's talk about the land use plan special committee and its um, activities going forward. Uh, so 
if I'm understanding Ms. Zines correctly, the members of the land use plan special committee will be expected by the board to actively participate in those activities, regardless of whether the other board members are or not, and they certainly can be, um, uh, with the expectation that they would, they would update the board as progress continues on an ongoing basis and leading up to the ultimate adoption of the plan. Is that your interpretation, Van? Did I restate that correctly? Uh, that's maybe somebody's interpretation of it, but I don't think that's the staff's interpretation. The staff, the staff feels that the committee was created to review and uh, recommend a, whether or not the county needed a land use plan. And that's what the subcommittee did. And that's what you've got before you today. We don't think there's a place for another subcommittee when it's the whole board's determination of how this thing runs and the way it goes. It's the board's responsibility going okay. forward. In my mind, I'm trying to go back and I, I just don't think I can quickly and efficiently find the, the scope that the board approved for the special committee. Um, well, I, do you, well, I have, I, it's crystal clear to me <laughs> well, because in fact, what I have, what minute, we have in that means, I'm sorry, what I'm, what I'm looking for solution. is that, is that verbiage, not an interpretation, but what I'm looking for is a, is the well, verb. I understand the, that. So that I understand that, sir. But you, what, what you I was trying to tell you, scene, was you do was not have the floor, excuse me, <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what I'm saying is I'm looking for the verbiage to clarify the actual words that were approved by the board so that then there can be discussion on interpretation. Okay, I'm okay. sorry, that is what I was trying to tell you is in the final draft, I took those words from my motion and I plugged them into the resolution. So that's what the verbiage is. Which and part you, of the verbiage? And you can go back to the recording there is a recording of that meeting on October the 26th. No, I thought um, you were saying that it's in this resolution that we're seeing now. Yeah, if you're asking about the scope. Where, so I'm asking where. It, it's in the whereas, the, the third whereas. Whereas the Pulaski County Planning Board has heard in the course of several public hearings, the concerns of property owners and the community and therefore have undertaken consideration of the need of a countywide land use plan to protect agricultural rural and natural areas through the formation of a special committee at their October 26, 2021 meeting by unanimous consent with purpose to submit final recommendations to the full board on how best to protect these areas no later than the date to be determined by the planning board chairman. So that, that does address, uh, uh, it sounds like it addresses the uh, submit final recommendations. But what I'm discussing specifically is the involvement of the special committee based on what Van was saying, Mr. McClendon, along with staff. So. Well, I guess I, if I may say, may I, may I speak to yes. Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. um, I don't see how we can submit final recommendations without being part of the process from the beginning and working with staff and working with the consultant. To We're not at that point at this time. From what, excuse me, from what I understand, we're making a motion that we send this resolution here to the board, to the quorum court for their consideration. Is that right? Is that what we're voting on? It, that we send it, this this here to the quorum court. That's right. And we're in the discussion um, phase before that before that vote. Um, and I believe we're still addressing Ms. Dean's question about the involvement of the special committee. Um, and uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. Hayes. Uh, one of the things, since we don't know what kind of we think we know about what the quorum court's going to do, 
in terms of uh, the planning commission and or the special committee, although I don't know that anything about the special committee has gotten to them. So I, I think we might be, we being the planning commission might be a little bit premature uh, in trying to decide how we want to interrelate with the quorum court based on what they do since we don't know what they're gonna do for sure. So I would I would argue that, uh, mm. not, I don't like to argue against Miss Ean, she's an apt <laughs> argument, so to speak, but I think we might be a little bit premature in trying to decide how the planning commission wants to either one or all uh, or the subcommittee or whatever uh, to, uh, to, to act on uh, what we don't know for sure that the quorum court is going to do. So I would, I would argue that uh, at this point, we, we defer uh, trying to uh, interpose the position of the planning of the special committee until we find out what the uh, quorum court, what kind of uh, package they want to deliver to us. And Mr. Majors, that's consistent with your point. Am I correct? I agree, yes, sir. Uh, let's vote on whether we're going to send this to the quorum court, see what the quorum court is going to do, then we see how we're going to re-interact with the quorum court. Okay, and so Ms. Eames, um, your, your point is duly noted. Um, and so at this point, uh, any I just want to call for any further discussion before we have a vote on the resolution as presented today. I agree with the discussion. I just wanted to make a point of that so that we can remember to talk about it later. Very good. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor of adopting the resolution to adopt countywide land use plan final draft as presented today, um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good, unanimous. Oh, you know what? I just saw that just for the record. Uh, Cara, were you on, on that vote? She she sent a chat. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yeah, I, I, I noticed that she said I need to excuse myself. So I'm asking her if she was in that vote and apparently not. So I think it's, it's still unanimous, but I think it would be seven to zero. Okay. And, okay. Noted. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Ains. I happen to see that as well. Okay, um, next item of business is, or next item on the agenda is chairman communication. Um, I realize it's 415, but I need to bring another item up to the, to the board for discussion. And it's um, in relation to notification I received um, between Mrs. Eanes and staff in regards to a special request that she has of staff. And um, now I have not spoken to Mrs. Eanes, I've not spoken to um, staff since I've received that email. So um, I would like to, um, Mrs. Eanes, if you can briefly uh, explain what the communication or what your request is and if in fact it is still on the table are you still? Oh, you can remove that. Uh, and okay. I'm sorry you had you were troubled by that. So you can please, yeah, we don't need to discuss that with the board at all. Okay, so then yeah, so you. You, you currently do not have additional requests of staff. Um, not that way, no. I okay. won't. I won't ask. No. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Okay, and the other thing is, I just I just feel like uh, even though. I was out for the last two meetings. <laughs> you guys, have, uh, I think the board has really made some good progress here. So I, again, I appreciate everybody, uh, everybody's involvement from the board members to, to stakeholders. I mean, I'm sorry, to uh, community and attendance, attendees, and everybody that's provided input. Um, staff communication, Van, do you have anything? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh... We've printed off a copy of the minutes from last. Does does any of the board members do any of the board members have a, a readable version of the minutes? Because the one that we have is clear. 
I thought mine was missing. How many pages was it? Because mine it, only had two pages. It is. It's three total, <laughs> front and back. Okay, and, and that's then the it. third page. The yeah, mine, I don't have a. I don't have a double sided. My front is just. Um, I don't. I'm missing page two. I guess. Uh, everybody's miss, went from one to three. Is what. Yeah. And then, then part of the old business on page one is upside down, but I don't think it has anything to do with us. In mine, anyway. That was probably just an error in the printing. Yeah, I, I think that's probably what the deal was. But we do have the minutes, and they're they're in form. So we'll we'll address that next next month. That'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that I think would very much. Uh, it seems that would address it because I. Uh, yeah. So you're saying, yeah, that would be on the same. Okay. So you'll provide those to the staff. I'm sorry, to the board at your. We'll, we'll email them again. We'll email them to everybody to make sure they come out the right way. That, that'd that be great. No need, unless anybody objects, no need to mail it. Uh, but if you email and maybe um, if everybody gets, when everybody gets a chance, please read those and respond. That way um, we can move forward with those. Um, um, yeah, so let me, let me be clear. I, I, I'm asking that all all board members, members, uh, Van, if you, let's see, today's Tuesday, you can get those to us within the next few days, certainly by the end of this week, right? Oh, absolutely. So I, I'd like to ask that all board members, please review those and provide comments back to, to Van and staff before our next meeting so that uh, those can be clarified uh, efficiently at the beginning of the of the next meeting. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else, Van? I don't think so. Okay. I have nothing else, uh, so I'll I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn. Move to adjourn. Mr. Wilson. Second. Okay. Mr. Hayes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Enjoy. Chairman. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.